Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for making the French knot. Now this is an embroidery stitch that I think is one of the really most important ones. There are lots of them that are important. I'd say there's about a dozen that I use regularly. And the French knot, I would say, is in the top three. It's a little bit tricky when you're first learning it, and it's a little bit tricky after you learn it. There are plenty of opportunities for the knot to snag or tangle. And I'm going to show you different tips that I have for making a successful French knot. And I'm also going to show you a cheat at the end of the video. Now, if you've watched my videos in the past, you've seen this technique. It's not a, it's not a giant thing, but it is helpful when you're stitching and you want to just perfect the stitch you've already done. Sometimes it's really hard to take out a knot. You have to just clip it out, and then you have to figure out how to knot off your thread. And I'll just show you a quick little cheat to fix it. It's not something I'm particularly proud of, but it works. So let's get started. So French knots are really a very valuable stitch. They're one of the most 20 important stitches in embroidery, but they're also kind of tough to learn. They can be used as just a little dot. It adds an interesting texture. And if I come really close here, you can see all these beautiful little dots. Depending on the color scheme, it adds a little contrast and it's a nice center of a flower. And it's a little accent. It can be a flower in itself. So those are quite beautiful when used kind of one-offs or on their own with spacing around them to really showcase the individual French knot. Now they're also beautiful in clusters when they're together. They can create an interesting field of flowers. In this one, I created one where I made a little labyrinth with them, trying to look like shrubbery, but it's just a gorgeous texture. Let me show you how I do it, some tips, and a cheat method as well. So the first tip is to use a milliner's needle. Now the milliner's needle comes in different sizes and different lengths, but the key to a milliner's needle is that the eye of the needle and the shaft are about the same width, so your knots will slide off your needle. They don't cost much more than embroidery needles, but they're worth it, particularly if you do French knots or other stitches that require winding your thread around your needle. Now, I just want to show you the contrast. Here's an embroidery needle, and you can see that the eye of the needle kind of bellows out a little bit. You can certainly use this in your knot making, your French knot making, but it's just easier to do. For some people, they find it much easier. It's really a personal preference. I like to work with an eye that is a little bit larger than most needles, so I always look for a larger needle. That's just personal preference, and that's what sewing is about, finding the tools that help you achieve your goal. Secondly, I like to work with 12 to 18 inches of length when I'm making French knots. Now, you can make them with a little bit longer length or even a little bit shorter, but the ideal is 12 to 18 inches, and you'll find your window, your sweet spot within that realm. Most people use six strands to make a French knot, but you don't have to use six strands. The six strands give a nice weight to the French knot. If you want something more delicate, try using four strands, three strands. Really find what works for you. I have a knot at the end and my needle threaded, and so now I'm ready to start making my knot. So now the French knot goes in your fabric and then back down your fabric. So it's a two-step process with a wrap in between. So no matter where you put your knot, you'll just come up through the fabric and pull your thread until you have nice tension on your thread. I like to take a grip of the thread with my left hand, because I'm righty, and I wrap it around. Now most people say wrap it around two or three times. The more times you wrap, the more likely you'll have a chance for it to tangle. Some people like to make larger knots, so they'll use the six strands of floss. If they want a more delicate knot, they'll use less strands. Now I'm of the belief that you can continue to wrap it as many times as you want to get the largest knot possible that you want for your project. Some people don't follow this theory, and that's okay. The more times you wrap your thread around, the more chance you have for error. So I can understand why they recommend only two or three times around. From there, you want to place your needle back in your fabric, not at the same point where you came out of, but just near it. And while you're putting your needle back into your fabric and sliding it in, 
you want to keep that tension with your left hand or your other hand. So now I slide that needle in, I'm going to hold it down and gently pull it out again, maintaining tension with my left hand and I'm going to pull it slowly through. I hear the little pop. It's going through, keeping that tension and I have a beautiful little knot. So to do that again, without this, all the stops and starts, I'll come up with my needle, pull my needle until it's taut, but not so tight. I'll wrap it around, three wraps, take my needle, go back down next to where I came in, not the same hole, slide it most of the way through, keep my left hand taut, Hold it, go slowly, keeping that tension the entire time, and pulling my knot. So the key is really the tension, the length of the thread, and not wrapping your needle tightly. You don't want to wrap it really tightly. You don't want to wrap it so loose that it's floppy. You just want to wrap it snugly, like you're coating it. Then I'll go back down through the fabric, maintaining that tension. Pull my thread and gently pull my needle and I have my knot. So I'll come up here, wrap my thread, go back down and I have my knot. Another tip is when you go up from your fabric, particularly after stitching some knots or some stitches, See how it tangles and winds? You want to just gently untangle that. So I just hold the base and just gently let it unwind. So it's not a fast process, but it is something that you should find pleasure in doing and just create very slowly and methodically. And remember, every time you make a knot, you're increasing your little repertoire, your experience base to make the knots. So it's very hard to recreate the error in a knot when you are trying to film it. It's very easy to create the error when you're not trying to film the error. So I'm gonna show you a video where I created a French knot. It wasn't perfect. And I'll show you my cheat method for repairing that. So let's say you've created a French knot and this one is nice and perfect. But this one is a little wonky. If I press it down, you can see how it didn't knot up very nicely. If I hold it straight up and play with it, I might be able to get it to work. But what I want to do just to secure it is I'll take my needle and come in very close to the bottom of it. And then I'm just going to anchor it in place. And that depending on the way the knot is shaped, I might go through the knot directly and hold it down, or I might have to fold it on itself and hold it down, or I might have to do both. And it really depends on what you want to do to salvage that knot. I can sometimes just go around it and hold it down like that. So when I make a French knot, I can go around it, stitch it down, and pull it, and I can either get a great French knot or one that needs a little assistance. And again, it's just a matter of taking your thread and figuring out the best way to cure it. So those are some of my tips for making a successful French knot. The basic thing after all those tips is, yeah, it can still flub up or make a mistake. So just practice. Cut yourself a little slack. They're beautiful stitches. They're very effective. They have so many uses, whether used alone or in groups. I hope you find this stitch really valuable. If you have other tips on making a French knot that I didn't mention, please post them in the comments below to help us all out here. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And don't forget to join me on Patreon, where I teach watercolor classes, different art classes, bookmaking, and painting. Thanks for joining me today.